So, uh, to kind of get a handle on that, you you kind of need to know where young adult literature came from. Um, and honestly, it's kind of funny. It's it's only been a series as long as teenagers have kind of been a separate class of people. Mm -hmm. um, so, back in the 30s and 40s, uh, right after the Great Depression, is when people figured out, the advertisers figured out, there was a whole separate group of young people who were all flooding back into the high schools who were kind of a separate market now from the adults and the children. And so they started uh, thinking about ways to market different things to them. The books didn't really catch up until the 60s or so. Um, mm. First books that were recognized, the first books that were called young adult books were, uh, one of them was called The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, and it was the first book published uh, in this genre that had, I guess it's not a genre, a category, that had been written by a teenager for teenagers to read, and it had a teenager as the protagonist. Hmm. And it was very, very different from the kind of stuff that had been read by young adults before. Before that, it had been um, pretty genre, like light romances or possibly horror stories. Um, and this was the first book that felt a lot more realistic. It was kind of gritty. It was a story of two conflicting teenage gangs in the streets of Tulsa. Um, it just had a very different feel to it and teenagers could relate to it a lot more. Um, so after that, uh, books started being written specifically for the young adults. Um, and in the seventies, there was a lot of kind of gritty stuff or stuff that was like exploring your identity. And a lot of it was, I I haven't really come across a ton of that. That was really great. But also that's about the time that uh, Madeline Langle became a big deal uh, mm -hmm. in the seventies. Um, the eighties, you had all of the endless series of things like Sweet Valley High and Bobsy Twins and Animorphs and Goosebumps and like all of the things that were 150 books a series. Um, and a lot of that was hack writing. I actually remember being a little kid in the libraries and my mom would tell me to open up the book and see if it said that it was written by or if it was created by. And if it said yeah. by, then I, I would know that it was hack writing written by some committee somewhere. And, but uh, most of it was pretty formulaic stuff mm -hmm. until the 90s and we got Harry Potter in the 90s. And Harry Potter is really the book that changed the whole landscape of young adult literature. It was the first book that became a worldwide global event, kind of like when a blockbuster movie comes up and everyone's in costume and everyone's lining the streets outside the bookstores and camping out on the, you know, on the sidewalks and things. Um, so she, Rowling really expanded the market for young adult literature in ways that nobody had ever done before. Yeah. Um, and after that, so there are basically three series that kind of set the stage for where we are in modern young adult literature. It was Harry Potter and then Twilight and then The Hunger Games. Um, and those three came really hard on each other's heels. Twilight came out right about the time Harry Potter ended and then Hunger Games came out not long after that. Um, and I think since then, um, because those three series have really expanded the market to the extent where it's even um, the people who are reading the books, young adult has come to mean anybody from the ages of 10 to all the way up to even 25. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So it's those three books have kind of made it possible for people, authors who would not normally have uh, had an audience or had a much smaller audience to get their work out and actually be seen by a lot of people. So we're actually glutted right now. It's also the reason why we're glutted in the YA market with all the ripoffs of all of the series, all the, the vampire series that are everywhere. Right. Uh, and the, the Divergent series was just basically a Hunger Games ripoff. The Maze Runner is a Hunger Um <laughs> So a lot of what's coming out now is either pretty obviously imitating one of those three series or it's um, 
stuff that maybe would not normally have gotten through the publishing uh, process, but because there's such a huge demand now, it can't.